In a world where AI's sinister secrets are being revealed, and hackers are exploiting cutting-edge technology to wreak havoc, we all must navigate the treacherous landscape of cybersecurity. So in this video, we're going to explore the most interesting developments in cybersecurity related to artificial intelligence. And we'll discuss the astonishing power of a new model called Pascan, a new AI that can crack passwords in 30 seconds, plus the real AI danger that was uncovered through a simple April Fool's prank. And more. Let's dive in. The Sinister Secret of Auto GPT. Chaos GPT's shocking plot unveiled. Well, it's been all over the internet recently, mostly because of a feature called Continuous Mode. So basically, it lets GPT-4 work without any user input. You don't have to be there to prompt it. Which means if the decisions are just sitting there being prompted into it, it's kind of like running on its own in a cycle. And in some sense, it's making decisions on its own, which is kind of cool, but kind of scary, right? Well, someone took Auto GPT and made a new project called Chaos GPT. And then they asked it, how could it destroy humanity? So then it goes down this rabbit hole and it enlists the help of other AIs to help it learn about deadly weapons. And at one point it even tried to get another AI to go against its original programming to create world peace. So thankfully it only managed to get out a few tweets, but it definitely freaked a lot of people out, and me included. And if you want to check out the whole interaction, there's a link in the description below. But here's your warning, you can't unsee it. Microsoft Security Copilot. The AI revolution in cybersecurity. GPT-4 is part of the cybersecurity package. So Microsoft just launched a new tool called Security Copilot, and it uses OpenAI's GPT-4 to help cybersecurity professionals. So it does a bunch of different tasks, like summarizing incidents, analyzing vulnerabilities, and sharing info with colleagues. And it could make their life easier, allow them to process more information in the same way that GitHub Copilot X did. And you need summaries because it's trying to learn from 65 trillion signals a day. Yeah, that's trillion, trillion with a T. I'm not kidding, trillion signals a day. I mean, that just must be like everything happening on the internet looking for vulnerabilities. And I could see how with that much signal, it's like drinking from a fire hose, but beyond what you could even imagine with a fire hose. So a system like this, they can do a great job summarizing lots of data, giving us something usable, finding a signal in the noise, maybe this is a good use case for it. AI versus human error. Learning employee behavior to protect data. So one interesting way that security experts are integrating generative AI into their products is to deploy it in a company and have the artificial intelligence learn about all the employees and exactly how they conversate, the style that they talk in. From there, it can get a baseline of what people are supposed to be doing, who might be making mistakes, but more importantly, the main problem with cybersecurity is usually human error so it can tell a bigger system when somebody feels like they're doing something that just doesn't sit right. A generative AI doesn't have to just notice these signals, it could instantly shut off an email, stop something, notify someone, or point out who in the company violates the most policies. And in that way, this kind of cybersecurity tool can actually eliminate risks before they even become vulnerabilities. However, of course, criminals can use the same technology to learn about who is the right person for them to target at a company. And also having an AI figure out basically everything that you say and do and all that is kind of like maybe a little bit too far too for an employer to know all that about each of their employees. So like a lot of cybersecurity tools, it just depends on who's using it and for what reason. Terrifying artificial intelligence intelligence cracks passwords in 30 seconds. Pascan exposed. So Pascan is a new artificial intelligence model, and it has the incredibly scary capacity to crack passwords, making it a significant concern for all online security. And make no mistake about it, it is out there right now. Now the reason behind why it's so effective is that it was actually trained on patterns that came from leaked passwords. So it took the tens of millions of leaked passwords that were once really used by people and hopefully they've all changed their passwords by now, but it's that data set that it was trained on. And it was trained on all that data to look for patterns, what kind of passwords are most likely to be used and then it applies those in sequential order of what's most likely to work. And the results were that it cracked 51% of passwords in a minute and over 81% in the course of an entire month. So when you're thinking about a password and you're just, even if you're pretty much typing it randomly, just the way that our keyboards are laid out, the way that we think, there's big macro patterns in the way that we write them. And the rise of an artificial intelligent model like Pascan to me means that you gotta stop typing your password off your brain. You've gotta choose a random generator because try as you might to be random, it's just not random. And you gotta keep updating your passwords because when that gets leaked onto the internet, it's going to learn from other people's patterns. And because of leaks in the first place, you definitely need to be updating your password all the time, which is like obvious, but sometimes you just need to hear it. Beware of AI powered scams. How hackers can use ChatGPT to fool you. 
So hackers can now use large language models like ChatGPT to target everyday people. Because generative AI can write really convincing human-like emails and text messages and websites, they're getting way better at crafting convincing phishing emails. And you know, phishing, you're like writing people like, hey, I'm legit, send me your password so I can help you. Not legit. You know, but an email or a text message, the way it could respond so quickly and sort of remember the way the conversation was working, you might be convinced that only a human could do that. And so I think, even though some people would say this is premature, I think from now on, if they're not whitelisted in your contact list, you basically should assume that it's not real. And even if I'm a little bit too early to it, by the end of this year or in a few months, this will probably be much more common. For example, I have played around with voice cloning tools and with only six minutes of somebody's footage, I can make a realistic sounding voice, which is very dangerous. Because if you get a call from somebody you know, as long as somebody else got six minutes of their voice, they might be synthesizing that voice. So you might trust them, but if it's from an unknown number, be very careful. Be like, why are you from a new number? In fact, even if you'd give me an answer, I don't even know if I should believe it. The hidden dangers of AI. Will artificial intelligence ever break the unbreakable encryption? So one of the most interesting things about encryption is that it really is fundamentally down to the most arcane branches of mathematics. Things like multiplying prime numbers that can only go one direction are really at the heart of what makes them work. And then you go another layer up and you have to understand network analysis, how systems are linked together, who has permission to what. And then you go up the next level and you're where humans are and you wanna think about social engineering to hack a system. And every layer has its own world of vulnerability abilities and ways to protect yourself. And if there's a crack in any of them, sometimes the rest can just fall along with it. I'm sure that as just humans, we won't be able to secure all of those layers. So you'll need other neural networks to go out there and find them and patch them up first. But one big question is on the most fundamental layer, the actual mathematics of prime multiplication and factoring. Can AI ever crack that code? I mean, it might not be possible, but people are experimenting with new ways to use artificial intelligence, with more logical, symbolic, and formal methods, and that might lead to a complete breakdown of the encryption system. So we have to keep an eye on any artificial intelligence that's looking for a fundamental breakthrough in an unexplored area of mathematics. How AI is enhancing cyber threat detection. Recorded Future is a threat intelligence company, and it just introduced a new artificial intelligence tool that's based on OpenAI's GPT-4, to help model and synthesize the huge backlog of hacker information that they have. So this company was able to leverage the 15 years of data that they've collected on hackers, their infrastructure, and their criminal campaigns. And they're using AI to connect it all into an intelligence graph. And with this, they should be able to notice slight deviations giving them near real-time information about breaches. So the company CTO talks about how the power of these kind of models is to summarize lots of information. And doing it close to real-time and with more accuracy, whereas the comparable human might take hours and have more mistakes. And even better, to help understand it, a regular person, a client of the company, can ask a real human question like in ChatGPT, and it can synthesize that information and move it into a large language model so it can actually relate back to the human what they found. April Fool's prank reveals real AI dangers. Artificial intelligence is becoming incredibly popular with cybersecurity companies, and for good reason. But the same way that ChatGPT can sometimes confabulate and misinform, so can these systems. And recently, one of these platforms ran an April Fool's prank with a Twitter chatbot, claiming it would do something, but it wouldn't. It was just an April Fool's prank. But what wasn't funny about it to some people is that it created fake information. People thought that the hashtag had more power than it did, and if what if that was something that people believed and it was more serious? An AI that generates incorrect information that motivates somebody to do something might be just as bad as a vulnerability that gives them access to data. It just causes a kind of damage that's not so individual and it's more on a societal level. Thank <laughs> you.